So very connected to the last presentation about the TikToks, in, in my training at my university in our decolonization process, we're taught to always start with a land acknowledgement. So before this uh, presentation, I took this photograph um, of this wonderful storm we're experiencing <laughs> in the river outside. Um, and I just wanted to read uh, an acknowledgement about the land that we're on and also um, be in gratitude to our Indigenous colleagues who taught us a lot of these decolonial de pedagogies. We are on the ancestral, sorry, there's a little thing here. We are on the ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands of the Anishinaabeg, Three Fires, Confederacy of Ojibwe, Odowa, and Putawa peoples. The land on which we speak today was ceded in the 1819 Treaty of Saginaw. We acknowledge and honor the pedagogical teachings and learnings from our Indigenous colleagues, Nadia McLaren, Anishinaabe Kweg Bear Clan, and our OCAD University elder, Liz Iswamik, Anishinaabe Mitawawan Kwe, with deep gratitude. Sorry, the slide. Oh, maybe it has to be on here. Okay, so it's only working on the screen. So I'm just going to start to talk about our collaboration. So Ala teaches at State University of New York in art history, and I teach at OCAD University in Toronto. And during COVID, we decided we wanted to collaborate since we were able to teach online. And this was an amazing opportunity to work across borders in a kind of decolonial framework that we wouldn't have been able to do without the COVID pandemic. So the way that we thought through this was decolonization as re-existence, and I'm going to pass the mic to Ala to talk about the way that we thought about this project. Yeah, hi everyone. Thank you for coming to our talk. Um, so we, uh, Eileen teaches a course on portraiture, and I uh, was teaching a, a course on contemporary art and globalization. Eileen's classes at the CAD University are very, very multicultural. Uh, OCAD ha uh, usually gets a lot of international students and students from various communities. So we thought that it would be a really good idea to kind of to think about the traditional genre of portraiture, you know, think Mona Lisa, uh, kind of as, as our most traditional thing, and rethink that and think about it in a very different way. So we, st we, 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 we started asking students about kind of how do you connect portraiture uh, or depiction in a way that is not, again, is not your traditional kind of up to, up to here with very deep, dark, and sad eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so unlinking tradition, the tradition of portraiture from the Western kind of hierarchical, usually it's very wealthy people, usually many of them are white males, et cetera, et cetera. And thinking in terms of how do we uh, use portraiture to portray something that is important for us right now, uh, maybe using ourselves, uh, maybe using someone, someone else, and bringing also marginalized voices into the discussion of portraiture. So there are a lot of cultural appropriations, uh, but also kind of oppositional appropriations uh, of, the, of the portraiture that we could draw upon. So we could, how do we get there? Yeah. yeah. So the way we, uh, yeah, let's just do all yeah. of them yeah. together. So it was a, the, what it ended up being is a Zoom class uh, with a lot of studio, studio time for Eileen and a lot of kind of discussions and thinking through, through, from us. But the classes were together meeting together very often. So we created a lot of community building, uh, kind of multi-model participation. It was very much student driven because they, they were supposed to create the portraits and then my students were supposed to decide how they're going to curate an online exhibition. Um, communicating with the, with the public, how do you talk, how Eileen students would have to explain to my students, um, the students at OCA, um, sorry, the students at SUNY Genesia do not have any real art practice. They are art historians, so they did not, they really didn't know what art, art artists do in a way. Like, you, you know, they paint, etc. but there was no real understanding of that. So we, and we, we talked to them about that. They, the student artists talked about their kind of ideas, and then we also had obviously guest speakers. 
And um, so now we could tell you about the results. <laughs> Yeah, so one of the things we did was a pre-class survey to acknowledge who is in the class, what their knowledges are and where they're coming from, to deeply know the portrait subject through interview instead of seeing the portrait subject as an object. We centered guest speakers who are POC with lived experience, and we had student-driven design critique and feedback rather than centering us as the expert. So I'm just gonna run through a few of the beautiful paintings that the students made. So these are paintings my students did over Zoom of Alice students. Um, so they got to know each other very, very well. We designed an interview process. Um, this painting by Haley Chu, she focused on water and crying because her two subjects from Alice class talked a lot about crying through the pandemic as an emotional release. So this is how she decided to paint them. Um, this student did a really interesting thing where she actually paints the internet and the Zoom windows and the phone windows. So all of this is hand painted in order to talk about the disconnect of humanity in the digital space. This painting was very, um, you know, this is the student, Alice student on Zoom just talking um, through the interview and my student painted them in this very stoic, um, you know, very calm. Uh, emotional demeanor because the student was quite shy and it took a lot of time for her, for him to open up to her and she talks very beautifully about that in the artist statement and then this we decided to do this project again because it was so um, engaging our students just loved it they stayed friends across borders and continued to talk over whatsapp and Instagram um, so this is a painting that we did in our second iteration and we decided to do self-portraits in the COVID um, you know, emotional space. And so this painting was by Catherine Chan and she was a mother with three kids during COVID. And this painting is about the only place she had any space to be herself, which was in the bathtub. And so this is a self-portrait in the bathtub with the bath toys around her. All right, okay, so what we will do then is so my students then had to take all of these wonderful things and I'm going to just kind of go through, uh, figure out how to help students to express themselves through the artist statements, through the work statements. So I'm just showing you the works, but also, and then they used uh, a virtual exhibition space to create the exhibition. So this is the result of the exhibition of the portraits. Uh, it's called Looking Out While Looking In. And the idea was they created, I don't know if you, you can see, but the idea was to create the space narrow and almost claustrophobic the same way that we felt during, uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so I'm just kind of going to, and this is this, the, uh, the other iteration where the students were painting uh, uh, the work of there. That's it, we're done. done. Well, thank you so much, we really enjoyed uh, the project. We will have the slides for you if you're interested.